Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage. Now today is that special day of the week. Today is New Comic Book Day. And these are the books that were released on December 19th, 2018. So this is the day I pick out some good books to read. I come back and give you a huge spoiler-filled review. So if you don't want spoilers, back out now. Or if you'd like, you can use the timestamps down below to skip the books you don't want spoiled. So all right, first up, let's get started. First book this week, we have Black Badge number five from Boom Studios. Now this is a book I have thoroughly been enjoying. The story follows groups of kids who are Boy Scouts, and now we also have Girl Scouts. And what they do is they are trained, possibly by the US government, to do covert missions throughout the world. Because really, who is going to stop a group of kids who are out hiking or backpacking or camping? And they just get lost in the woods. So it's a great cover. What we have here is we have, a, once a year, the best of the best groups get together and do what's called the Rainbow Badge Jamboree, where they are dumped on an island and forced to compete to get to the top of this volcano. Now, they do have some rules where there's no maiming or hurting or disfiguring, but apparently that is not the case when it comes down to it. Here we have our group who found a supply drop, and their supply drop consists of a bunch of weapons, fully automatics, all the way down to swords. So this is kind of interesting, although they decide to leave the guns behind because they do not want to kill anyone. So throughout the series, we're learning each one of the stories of these boys and how they got to join their group. And this one we have Kenny. They finally ask him what his deal is. Now, the story he's telling them is he was just a normal kid, and then one day he was told that his dad died, which really isn't true because we're getting the behind-the-scenes footage here that shows that his dad is being chased, possibly by the military, and he told he's told his dad is doing some very bad things. Really interesting. So, now our groups start meeting each other because they're all trying to get to this top of this inactive volcano, and they start duking it out. So... Once we have our groups fighting, and we have one, our main group, I think they're called like the Black Badge group. There's also like the pink, the blue, and possibly the white, I think they are. They start getting into the conversation of how our other group here, I believe this is the white group, and they're told their intelligence, and they survey, and that's what they do. And they come across some information about an, another covert group that is called the Honor Society. Now, apparently the Honor Society is the group of kids who are being taken and trained and they oppose the Black Badge. Now, we did meet one of the, uh, the groups last week, or not last week, but last month. His name is Jimmy, who was also in the Black Badge team. And he's like, hey, this isn't what you think. There's other forces at work here. Once you want to know the whole truth, come and visit me. So that was really cool. I'm really enjoying all the intrigue behind this. It's got a lot of twists and turns. I'm loving the plot line. I'm also loving the in-depth character builds up they have, where every single issue, they kind of spotlight a different camper. Love it. This book has a huge thumbs up from me. Now, the next book this week is Dead Man Logan, issue number two of 12 from Marvel Studios. This was a really interesting story. Oh, and this was actually kind of heartbreaking when I opened up the book this week. It's like, oh, damn. Um, really interesting story going on here. Now, we have Old Man Logan from the alternate timeline who is slowly dying due to adamantium poisoning. The whole storyline is consisting of him wanting to go through and clear some things up before he dies. And the thing he wants to clear up is he wants to kill Mysterio. Because Mysterio has the secret to causing this apocalyptic future that happened. Because he's the one that made uh, Wolverine turn on the X-Men. So, Ms. Sinister saw this in Old Man Logan's mind in the last issue. Went and found Mysterio herself and brings him to the Red Skull's daughter. Who is now leading this whole Neo-Hydra group to try to bring this about. So... We see this happening. Oh, and you gotta love this. It looks like Mysterio doesn't want to do this. When they found him, he was in a mental institution, completely happy, just keeping to himself, and he did not want to do this anymore. And Miss Sinister sort of forces him out of retirement. 
So we have uh, actually the new Hawkeye now, or you know Hawkeye and Old Man Logan getting together, and they are going around and just beating the snot out of all these criminals trying to find Mysterio, not realizing that Hydra has him. And of course, you know she's like, "Hey, the Red Skull's daughter." She's like, "I want to take this for a test drive. Let's see how this works." And then we have a lot more action, a lot more people getting beat up until finally they say, "Hey, I know where Mysterio's at. He's in Times Square." Old Man Logan comes across this group here being led by Mysterio. But again, he's up to his old tricks. It's not what it looks like. It's actually the Avengers group here. Gotta love that. So, again, I'm really enjoying this story. It's got a lot of character build up. Now, we know the future timeline that Old Man Logan comes from. So we know what is supposed to take place. Although it seems like it was... You know, it was rectified. It actually didn't come to pass. And he wants to make sure that it actually stays that way. So this is a good story. I'm enjoying it. Like I said, 12 issues, so it's not going to be very long of a run. But it should be a good read. And now, coming at us from Image Comics, we have Exorcisters, issue number three. This is another series here I've really been enjoying. Now, the storyline can get kind of, you know, fluffy at times, but it's still kind of cool. And the artwork also... I love this really simplistic cartoonish feel. It kind of adds to the overall kind of dark humor behind it. So we follow the Haro sisters, Kate and Kate, but we learned in the last issue that they are actually not sisters, that one of the Kates is the soul of the other one, but when it was finally gonna be returned to her body, it had spent so much time away they cannot be blended, so now they live as sisters. So here they are in hell trying to defend this gentleman who sold his soul to a demon. And it didn't work. They found him guilty, so this demon gets to keep his soul. So, you know, they do what they do. They just kind of kill things. They love killing demons. It's their job. They are the exorcisters. <laughs> So after that, we get, they, and they start every single issue out kind of like that, where they have their own little side story, and then it cuts into the big one. So they get back into their home world, back to Earth, because they actually travel to hell and these other demon dimensions, which is kind of neat. And we stumble across this little fly guy here, and it turns out that this is the Kate who did not have a soul ex-boyfriend, and his name is Buzz. You know, you kind of see the irony in that. And then we start telling the story of Buzz and how they met. So when Kate was on a quest to get her soul back after she found out that her mom had sold it to the devil, she meets Buzz, who manages an occult bookstore. And he's like, hey, I have an entire group of friends. This is what we do. We live the occult, and I think we can help you. Uh, try to get your soul back or try to because she didn't tell her it was actually her but they just she wanted to find out he's like you know we can help as time progresses they're like hey i think we can do this we have this whole ritual set up come to find out they're worshipers of beelzebub and every so often they have to bring him a soul to sacrifice well it kind of doesn't work out because kate here doesn't have a soul so she makes a deal with him and turns the tables on them. And Buzz is like, well, for penance, he destroyed our bodies, turned us into flies, we had to serve him in hell. But he released me to go find help because there is a bigger, badder darkness, the first darkness demon who is under, who is just going around and attacking hell and controlling these other demons and told Beelzebub, if you don't follow me, I'm going to kill you. He ends up killing Beelzebub. And, you know, Kate and Kate are like, you know, why the hell should we help you? We have no reason to help. Let hell destroy himself. And he's like, well, he's not only attacking hell. And then we see angels falling from heaven where this demon is killing angels as well. Really cool story. That's a great twist. Didn't see that coming. This book has a lot of potential. It's been a lot of fun. So I would put this up on my thumbs up book this week as well. And also this week from Boom Studios, we have Jim Henson's Labyrinth Coronation, issue number nine. Now, this is a book I have not done a review on in a while, but fear not, my faithful viewers, I have been reading this book. It's just, I sometimes I don't have enough time in a long video to actually cram this in. You know, it happens to a lot of my books where I don't actually do reviews on everything that I read for the week, but... 
This has been consistently a really, really good story. So if you were a fan of Labyrinth, I would suggest you pick this up. I mean, we have, it, it bounces back and forth. So here we have Jareth, who is the Goblin King. And this is supposed to be the, the during the uh, events of the current movie that was out back in the 80s. I can't even call it current. But it also bounces back through time to who I think is his mother. And this is Maria. And this is her story. And the similarities between the two. Really, really good. I love this. So Maria here had a boyfriend named Albert. They had a child. Albert was a noble. Maria was from a lower class. He decided he did not want to marry her. He left and he made a deal with the Owl King to come and take his child. So Maria is making her way through the labyrinth to find the Owl King. He made a deal with her that if she can reach him before time ran out, she could have her child. Now, everyone thinks that he grabbed a child just to have an heir to the throne, but it turns out he wants to use the child's energy to live forever. Now we start getting some really interesting information going on here because Maria has befriended the goblins and they started a rebellion, which was really cool. And I think this is where the Goblin King is going to come into effect. So here we have the Owl King making a facsimile of Maria's Albert and this child's dad. Now they never named the child, but I'm really thinking this is Jareth and I'm really hoping they come with that at the end. To go into this sort of wonderful, fantastical dream masquerade that Maria is in right now and keep her there and to kill her. But he seems to have the same feelings as Albert. And he tells her the story, or he starts telling her how he was a horrible person. He wished he would have stayed with her. And then lets her in on the Owl King's plans. And of course, Maria is not going to fall for this. She teams back up with her goblins. Oh, I just, you know, you got to love these little, when they show both the movie and the comic book together. Absolutely amazing. And she's coming up and she's going after the Owl King and she's got an army of goblins at her back. Absolutely love this story. Seriously, it gives me goosebumps. It's amazing to read. And I would suggest you read it too. Even if you're not a fan of Labyrinth, it is a really good story. So you don't know you don't have to know the backstory of the movie or anything. You can really just jump into it. It is nine issues in. Wow, that's actually been a long time now. But they should be rather easy to find, and I don't think they're even expensive at all. So this is a huge thumbs up. And coming at you next from IDW is Night Moves issue number two. Now, I did pick this up a month ago. The book was really good. I really enjoyed it. I think a lot of people were on the fence with it. So we have our main character here. His name is Chris Dundee. Now, Chris Dundee is telling this poor kid a story of when 40, some 40 years back in Las Vegas... He was trying to protect this woman, her name is Sophia, who ends up being murdered by apparently a hitman named Tom. We have this weird gentleman here, Smolinski, who seems to be going through some sort of uh, ritual to summon a demon. And apparently he does it. So we have Chris Dundee here 40 years back with a couple cops who are captured by this Smolinski guy. This is just absolutely insane. Love this. Because they do kill this guy. And then we sort of just shoot one year in the future. After all the events of this have happened. And we have Chris Dundee and Alex Alexis, who is the other female cop. Jackson, who was the other cop, who's trying to clean up Las Vegas now. This is his thing. He's going into politics. And our hitman, Tom O'Reilly, has now become a police officer. So it does get a little confusing at this point. You're just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Alexis lost her job over this, you know, because no one, they were talking about how they can't put in a report that it was demonic possession. The only place she could find a job is out in the middle of nowhere in the desert. So, but she still wanted to be a cop. So her and Dundee go and visit this gentleman named Jackson, and he's like, you know, guys, just drop it. Get out of here. I don't want to see you ever again. And they end up running into a priest, and this priest tells them that Jackson is possessed by this demon that was meant for this mob boss, Smolinski. So 
they all just want revenge and they got to figure out what happens why Sophia was killed and it's really it's a neat story but like I said it did get a little confusing so issue one was really good issue two here I'm kind of on the fence with just because it was a little hard to read but I will pick up issue number three and see how that goes I do have high hopes for this book also from IDW this week, we have Ninja Turtles Urban Legends number 8. Now, if you follow my reviews, you know that this is a darker, grittier Ninja Turtles. This is a retelling, or actually a remastered version, of a series that came out Image years back. But the series was never completed, and the original creator, the writer, and the artist are coming back to finish the series. So that's really exciting. Love that. So, when last we left our intrepid heroes here... We have Casey Jones' daughter being kidnapped. Now, Raphael, immediately all the turtles went right to the Foot Clan. And Raphael's like, no, these guys aren't bad anymore. So he went and talked to the Foot Clan. They're like, oh, no, we did it. But they were hired by this mob boss called Uncle Tony. What we are finding out here is that Tony believes Shadow, who is Casey Jones' daughter, to be his granddaughter and actually the child of a guy named Albert. And the Foot Clan supposedly had... Uh, proof of this so that was a really really cool twist and i'm interested to see where that goes so michelangelo feels like crap because he was the one who was babysitting her when she got taken and didn't even realize she was gone Raphael uh is hunting down the daughter while the foot clan sent him to kill tony saying hey if you kill this guy you will find the girl but uh you know, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't bring himself to do it after he actually saw her. So he finds Michelangelo. Michelangelo's like, hey, I will get her back. He ends up following the girl where she's supposed to be christened at a church and grabs her and returns her to Casey Jones. All the while, they're also getting reports of a giant bat flying around the city where a couple issues back, Splinter actually got turned into a giant bat. So we have this entire storyline going on as well. This is a good read. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Now, it really does have that kind of 90s feel to it and that sort of 90s dialogue. But, oh, and really kind of bad puns. Like here, he has an irresistible urge for pasta. I mean, not really a pun, but, you know, because he just spent some time with some mobsters. <laughs> and it's just like, okay. But it is a good read, and I'm excited to see it finally finish after all these years. So this is a thumbs up for me as well, especially if you're a big fan of like older books, 90s style and things like that. And coming out of Aftershock this week and back from its hiatus, we have a Walk Through Hell number six. Now, anybody out there who's been reading this series or following my channel knows this series is insane. It is crazy. So what we have is... From the very first issue, we had a couple FBI agents walking into a warehouse and seemingly walking to a little portal or a portion of hell. We have, let's see, we have, doo -doo -doo, oh, Shaw and McGregor here. And they don't know if they're dead or alive. They have no pulse. And they don't even know how long they've been in here. They think they've been in here for about two weeks when we discover on the outside that they've been only been in there less than two hours. So here is their deputy deputy director Driscoll, who wants her people out of there. They she sent two agents in. They never came back. They sent this group of eight man an eight man SWAT team in, who walked out after a few minutes, hopped into the back of a police truck, and all shot each other in the head. Shaw and McGregor go in. They're never seen from again. And it's just, it really, it's almost like a trip through madness with this entire story. No one else wants to go in. The police don't want to go in. The FBI don't want to go in. So Driscoll just, she just has to hell with it and she walks in on her own. So we flash back to McGregor and Shaw here. And we're also following the story of a, I believe it's a child killer named Callahan who can kind of make people do things. And they think he is also the one who is here creating this little portion of hell even though they have no idea so now we bounce back into the past this is another thing they do a lot in the story they bounce back in the past they try to give you some backstory here and here is driscoll telling her story of her own kind of personal devil that she met herself and this man here whose name is max was an 
honest-to-goodness Nazi back in World War II, talking about how he was in uh, Paris and he saw the Cathedral of Notre Dame and him and his friend were sitting there uh, and they were just completely enthralled by this thing, which is very, you know, when you first listen to that story, you're like, okay, why are they even talking about this? But it becomes very poignant towards the end here. So Driscoll is wandering around also now in this warehouse and she's talking to a gentleman named Goss who tells her he can see her, see her and he wants her help to come and get him. So she's wandering around aimlessly in the dark trying to find this man while McGregor and uh, Shaw here are just trying to get out. Eventually they stumble upon this, which is almost like a cathedral in this hellish nightmare world. And then they have uh, Carnahan, who is the child killer, just kind of spouting scripture at them. Seriously disturbing. And then if it couldn't get any more disturbing, then we have the flash of the Nazis sitting there staring at this cathedral themselves. I mean, this book is just crazy. I'm so glad it's back on track now. Like I said, they did take a short break, so it's good to see it come back. Garth Enos is just rocking this story. It is really just a complete and utter mind trip. Huge thumbs up. And our last book this week from Marvel Comics, Darth Vader issue number 25. Now, this is kind of bittersweet because I've absolutely been loving this series as issue number one. And I think that it all has to do with Charles Soule's writing. And I believe this is his last issue on this run. So up until now, we've had Vader going around. He's been slaughtering Jedi, doing his thing. And he finally, he asks the Emperor to have his own planet. And he wants Mustafar. So we all know this is very uh, sentimental for Vader. While there, the Emperor sends him with a mask of a powerful Jedi Lord or a powerful Sith Lord named Mammon. And Mammon possesses a person and builds this temple, this great castle for Vader to harness the dark side within the planet. He ends up turning on Vader and uh, using this portal to the dark side to create his own body or to get his body back. Vader knows he turns on him, ends up killing him, and uses this portal for himself. So here we see Vader's transition. Now, I love how Vader sees himself when he's merged with the dark side or when he's meditating. You have all this anger and rage and all the white parts or the robotic parts of his body where the force does not flow through. And he steps because he thinks this portal is the secret to him being able to bring back Padme. He, that's his thing. That's always been the motivation behind Anakin and Vader. Everything he does, he's doing for his own twisted love. What he does when he shows up here is he sees his own life told by the, the dark side of the Force. First, you have his birth, the Chosen One, unnatural, no father. And then you see he sees himself as the young Anakin. And we all remember this from the movie poster when The Phantom Menace came out. And then it continues on where his mother tells him he's having a dream. And then he sees himself as a child in the dark side. And we have these little flashbacks to Phantom Menace. And then we progress through his years where we have him returning and then being a young Padawan to a young Jedi to finally, you know, his master status when he's with Padme. And this, this right here, this... Oh, I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it again with him and Ahsoka. Seriously, what was more heartbreaking than Vader battling Ahsoka? I mean, that's just... Oh, it's just sad. Absolutely amazing storytelling here. This is just beautiful. Then we have him confronting all the Jedi Masters. Everyone that was killed at one time or another because of him. Except for Yoda here. I don't know why they stick Yoda there, but it's still very cool to see. So we have this force being Vader going through and killing all of these Jedi, being told to leave his past behind, where he again gets to see the final two people. This is who this is this is this is where he had to decide. Was he gonna go good or was he going to go bad? And we all know how that happened. And eventually he does meet Padme on the other side here. And he sees himself returned to Anakin. But she wants nothing to do with him. And, and the dark side of the Force ends up killing her. So he knows now. This is the point where he realized that there is no bringing her back. And he is just done with it. 
And I love this, that the Force showed him a glimpse of the future and showed him Luke, although he doesn't know who this is. And the demise of Vader at the hands of Luke. Just This was absolutely amazing. This was such a beautiful, amazing story. I mean, right here, people. This book, this is my pick of the week right here. So let's get right into my recap here. You all just heard how I felt about this book here. Right here, Darth Vader, book of the week. Gotta love this story. It's absolutely amazing. I implore everyone to pick this up in trades and read it. If you're not a Star Wars fan, it is just a good read. Then we have A Walk Through Hell 6, another big thumbs up. It is a tough read because it does get kind of wordy, but wow, it'll screw with your head. Ninja Turtles, Urban Legends, number eight. Another just fun, fun read. Night Moves, number two. Now, like I said, I am on the fence with this issue because it was slightly on the confusing side, but I enjoyed issue one, so I will give issue three a chance. Labyrinth Coronation number nine, another big thumbs up this week. This book is just full of nostalgia and a good read. Exorcisters number three, another thumbs up. It's just fun. Dead Man Logan number two. This was another really good read this week. I'm enjoying this series. I want to see where it goes. You know, I can almost see Mysterio kind of repenting from the way he's acting in the first two issues. And then last but not least is Black Badge number five. Again, I'm loving the character development in this story. It's a really, really excellent read. Now, last thing for the week, my cover pick of the week. Now, if you can find this book, people, I would suggest you grab it. It is seriously heating up on the secondary market already. And that's because it is just plain gorgeous. There it is. The Del Auto cover of Star Wars Darth Vader number 25. Now, I believe this is a 1 in 25 variant, so it might be a little on the hard side to find. But if you can grab it for a decent price, do it. Like I said, secondary market already blowing up. All right, people, those are my books for the week. These are my opinions. Your mileage may vary. To all my current subscribers, you guys are awesome, 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 seriously awesome. Thank you so much for watching. You know, I do this because of you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, hit that little CV down in the bottom right-hand corner and hit that little bell notification up top. That way you get all of my cool stuffs as they come out. And like I, like I say, everybody, thank you for watching so much and take it easy.